what's good ladies and gentlemen pusher man here with a very special episode of hard reset this is episode three and this one is really all about destiny 2 and the updates they're making and the new content that's coming out may 8th yes yes i know i've been away for two whole weeks so you're probably probably asking where the hell you've been at push well i have friends in town for one week and i had I have been a little bit busy with school since graduation is coming up. I graduated in June, so I had to kind of focus on that a little bit. But we're back, so let's get right into it. So Bungie did a stream this Tuesday, and it was all about the Warmind DLC coming May 8th. They've been teasing some really good things coming with this content over the past couple weeks, and this reveal stream showed us fans some new and really, really awesome content that's coming that we've been asking for quite a while now. So first and foremost, the DLC is, is about the Warmind, of course, Rasputin finally awaking, and he's causing a chain of reactions. This is really happening because of the Traveler has also awakened, so the pulse of his power is causing sleeping giants to finally wake up from their slumber, and the Warmind is one of them. So we're finally getting some Rasputin gameplay, we're finally getting, getting more into Rasputin, learning the lore about that, and it does take place on Mars, and even though we've been there before, it's in a whole new area, what they said, and we're getting more added info into the Destiny lore, into, into the Destiny lore like I said before. So our new hero that's being introduced is gonna be Anna, or Anastasia Bray. She's coming, and she looks like a total badass from the prologue that they showed. And from the cutscene, she looks like a hunter, which I'm kind of sad about because I wanted her to be a female titan because why not? But you know, I'm still here for it. She, so she's going to be a new vendor for us and we're going to get a closer look into Chloe's Bray like I said. And this will really help the lore because we've, we've, had, we've had little hints here and there about what Chloe's Bray was really all about. Now we're going to get a little bit more into his mystery and help us uncover a bit more secrets about him. Now we are getting a new enemy, but they're not a brand new faction, which I'm kind of disappointed about. So they're called the Frozen Hive, and they seem a bit more difficult than the regular hive that we face in my opinion, because they are an ancient type hive. So if you think about Crota or Oryx's hordes, they're kind of that kind of in that type of category. And I say that because of the alterations that they made to the enemies. Looking at the way they look, they're frozen, so you know, they're frozen, they're cold because they've been there for so long, they've been, they've been asleep for so long. And also, the way they made, the, way they made the, the, new, the new knights, they made, them, they made them have shields. They have shields, ladies and gentlemen. It'll be interesting to see how, that, how it's going to be used, because in the gameplay that they showed, it just shows that they use it to mitigate damage, but, you can, but they might be able to push us away to do damage or only mitigate damage only. So we'll kind of see, and you can break them, you can break them as well to take it away, and then it looks like they become more enraged. So that's actually a pretty nice mechanic that they added there. Now all of this was shown while they were on Mars and there's a new public event called Escalation Protocol. And I'm hyped for this because essentially it's a horde mode. So there's a total of seven waves and at the end of each wave there's a unique boss. But at wave seven it's going to be a huge boss fight. So if you think about the Mercury boss, the Mercury public event where the, the Time Lord, if you think about him it's probably going to be like that. And they said that there's five powerful bosses that you can face and they're gonna rotate these bosses weekly. Now, they're adding a variety, which is really, really good, and they're actually making public events a thing. Like they're, they're trying to incorporate it more into, instead of it being an afterthought, or instead of, instead of it having just, just something for you to do, it's having a bit more story into it. It's actually, actually something that's fun to do and not just like kind of like a chore. And it kind of plays like a mission too, so I'm really excited in the direction that they're going in with these. And so, since it's a public activity, everyone can, everyone in the area can join in. Now, you do have to finish the Warmind story in order to start the event, but if you haven't yet and you see somebody doing it and you join in that way, you'll still be able to, you still be able to receive some rewards. Now you know. Now we know that they're going to do this because of the whole inclusion and everything and whatnot. But it's fine. We, it's Bungie, so of course they're going to do it. 
Now another thing I'm really hyped for is that there are new weapons, of course, coming with this event. And the weapons dropped here are the weapons that will be most effective for it. And they look pretty technological, like, so if you think about the Warmind, they have the Warmind Rasputin-esque art to it. And I was actually hoping for another Sleeper Simulant or Out Outbreak Prime. Really though, the Sleeper Simulant, because I love that one in Destiny 1, and I want it back again. Hopefully, hopefully, Bungie, you make this happen. You hear me, Bungie? Can you make it happen, Sleeper Simulant? Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I'm not putting anything past them because they are bringing the Armentarium back for the Titans. They are bringing another exotic helmet for the Warlocks. So why not be be optimistic about, about them bringing back this weapon that I, I love so much? But if they don't, then I'm all right with it. So back to the event. So they are bringing this event now, and this is supposed to be a very hard public event because they said that they boosted the difficulty after they had their, their community summit. And what this summit was, was just bringing some of the big voices in the Destiny community, such as Datto, Bife, Gathalion, and Mr. Fruit, and so much more. And they were, they were taking their feedback and just trying to see what they can do to make D2 better. Now, we're not going to say, well, they should have done this a long time ago. No. We got to move beyond that and make the conversation, what can they do to make it better so that Destiny comes back to being the game that we all know and love. They also showed some some pretty neat things coming back, such as being able to use the sword like in Crota Raid. And there's a new weapon called the Falconry Staff that you can use during this event that puts out big damage. So it seems like this would be best used for a powerful boss, like the ending boss, like Wave 7, so that way you can so that way you can melt him a lot quicker. And just to wrap this part up, I gotta say, man. This is looking very promising and most important of all, fun. Because this is this is the type of end game that we needed. Something to do after we've achieved everything. We went through all the raids, went through the raid layers, and we just needed something more to do, something more challenging to do as the end game. And this this could probably bring that back for us. Now moving on to our next thing is Crucible and the changes that they're bringing there. Finally, they are bringing ranking to PvP. This is what we've been asking for since the first Destiny. Now, I know I'm particularly hyped about this because of the fact that they this is this brings me back to our to the Halo days when they were lone wolves and all that shit like that. Man, this is this is this is it. They're finally bringing ranking to PvP and Crucible. And there's going to be two types of, of things that you can join in on. So the first one is Valor, where there's no penalty, and it allows for everyone to play. And if you get streaks, you know you you, you go up and whatever and whatnot. So you don't you don't lose. It, so if you lose the match, you don't lose points. Now for Glory, this is the one where if you win. You, you gain points and as you and as you go on a win streak you gain even more points but the flip side to it if you lose you lose points and if you go on a losing streak you begin to drop you begin to lose even more points and i gotta be honest i like that because it puts you in a competitive mindset you have to make sure that you do your best no matter what and leaving games they're gonna they already said that they're gonna penalize you heavily for that so let's see what what the penalty is for leaving games and whatnot if it's like a failing thing like that so i'm interested to see how they handle that but i'm also interested to see like what kind of rewards we get because they've already talked about if you if you reach a certain tier in points you get you get the uh you get a special weapon you get a special legendary weapon called the redrix claymore and they added a special mechanic to this one that's called desperado and it's tied to the outlaw mechanic that's just awesome like this is this is a scout rifle too just oh man i'm excited for this but I want to know what else, like what, what other rewards are they going to be able to give? Is there and is there any any specific crucible loot that's coming to this that we can also get besides besides reaching for the Redrick Claymore? Because some of us, just to be honest, some of us aren't going to make it that far, and it's kind of interesting to see what else they're going to do to reward players 
that don't make it that far and how they're going to handle this as well are they going to make it a full season like are they going to let this season go out up, up until the next dlc which is going to be like september which will be year two or are they going to do it monthly but i want to be clear about one thing though i'm not saying to if we don't reach the redrix claymore level of points even if we don't reach that can we get something else? Like, can we get something? Can we get something that's equivalent to that? I'm not saying that. If you don't reach that, you don't reach that. People who reach that should be rewarded for it. I I humbly believe in you're rewarding something for the work that they put in. They put in that work to reach that top. They should. They deserve that weapon. What I'm saying is, is there any accolades to get to receive as we're climbing up the tiers? That's what I'm looking for. And the Regis Claymore is like the tippy top. That's the that's the cream of the crop. So that's what I want to know if, they, if they're going to add anything like that or not. Now that wraps up the PvP changes. And we're getting into the last, the last update that we've got. And that's exotic buffs and changes that they're bringing in with this new, this new content. Now, I'm excited for this because of the fact that they're finally going to make exotic weapons exotic. I mean, they're finally going to be a bit OP, which which we which we wanted because if it's just like a basic weapon, what's the point of going for them? So, some of the changes, some of the weapon changes that they're having is the Heart Light, the Skyburner's Oath, the Graviton Lance, and the Fighting Lion. These are just some of the ones right now that we know that they're adding, that are implementing changes to for May 8th. Now, I'm telling you, these changes here are crazy. Oh, also in the strum and the drang, like those two are crazy as well. So for the heart light, the ricochet bullets do double damage. So if you bounce it off of a wall and it hits someone else, like you can you can do trick shots, so many trick shots with that. Bouncing off a wall from a corner onto the into the into the other enemy while in PvP and knock them out within like and time to kill doubles. That's insane. And it, it gives more purpose to the bullets as well because what's the point of having them ricochet just to do regular damage just to, just in case you miss? I mean, that's all fine and dandy, but this here is awesome. Like, that's a huge change. The next one is the Skyburner's Oath. And what they're doing with this is they're adding tracking to the bullets. So. I'm, I'm especially hyped for this because I use scout rifles a lot and Skyburn's Oath was already my favorite weapon. Now you're telling me you're adding a bit of tracking to this weapon? Oh man. Oh man, that's gonna be crazy. Just, just think about that. I could be in the air as a Titan because I play a Titan or even a Warlock. You could be in the air, like floating in the air and you don't even have to aim. All you gotta do is just make sure you have your reticle on the enemy and it tracks and the bullet tracks them and hits them. It, the time to kill is is a bit slow like that but i mean it, you're not you're not gonna miss that often regardless so that's that's pretty cool and for the graviton lands they've already in, they've already showed they already showed what, what what you can do with that but what they did with it is they increased the time to kill and now there's a two burst cap so if you get two head two two burst headshots, you're done. I could already tell you right now, this is gonna be a weapon used in PvP because that time to kill is insane. And if you're a really good shot, nobody you won't and even if you're in the 1v1s going against one going against somebody on, on the other team, you're gonna win as long as you can hit those headshots. If all the if all the bullets hit, it's a two cap. Now, they did say that the first initial bullet is the one that will really do the most damage. So you have a chance to, if you miss the other two bullets or the other bullets after that, then you have a chance to, to still make up for it. But you hit the, you hit the, if all those bullets hit the, hit the head and you get headshots with all of them, it's a two cap burst and that is amazing. This is what we're talking about. This is what we want. I mean, it kind of makes it OP. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm expecting a bit, a bit of a nerf for the, for the graviton lance because it's kind of strong. But this is what this is what we're talking about, man. This is what this is what we wanted. This is what we we're expecting. And for the strum and the drang, so if you kill somebody with the drang, the strum now it becomes overpowered. It becomes overcharged. And if you hit 
two head two headshots is is a kill with with the drag. I'm oh, sorry, with the strum. That is powerful. Like they, 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 this is this is so good. I'm I'm excited to hear. I'm hyped for this because of the fact that this is what we wanted. For Destiny 2, all the exotic weapons felt underwhelming. Why are they exotic weapons? They have a special ability, but that's it. There's nothing really, nothing really too much more, and nobody really used them. Now I expect I expect everyone to be using this. And also with the fighting lion, the, the grenade, the, the secondary grenade launcher, they've boosted the damage and the velocity to this weapon. So that's what made it underwhelming. So since they did that to this weapon, it makes it actually viable to use now. And I'm really, I'm really looking forward to using these because, like I said, they were just underwhelming for so long, and now that they finally boosted these up. I am I'm I'm crazy excited for what for what we're gonna see in in, in a PvP in the Crucible. I mean, just I already know that like like I said, the Graviton Lance is going to be that go-to weapon. So boost up your Graviton Lance is now because you're gonna need it. But I would personally be using the Skyburner's Oath because tracking bullets is OP as hell. And I've already liked the Skyburner's Oath, so I'm gonna be using that regardless. And also, I'm I'm not a big fan of this strum, but you know, two capping people with it is nice. But the graviton lance, so though, you two cap people with that, you're good. And with that, that wraps up this episode of Hard Reset. I like I said, I am so ready for May 8th. That's when the Warmind, that's when the Warmind DLC comes. I'm looking forward to learning more about Rasputin, and hopefully there's a sleeper simulant in there somewhere, Bungie. Uh-huh. But let me know what you guys think. Are you excited for the new DLC coming out? What about it is is hyping you up for it? Is it a new game mode, or is it a new exotic changes, or maybe it's Crucible that you actually get to be competitive in now? Whatever it is, just comment down below. And if you think you think that they could do more, let me know what you're thinking. Also, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe for more Hard Reset videos because I'll be bringing these out weekly. This is Pusher Man. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.